The lists of list data structure is relatively simple. You just have list and each of the items is a list. But there's some sort of limited utility of this because a lot of times in a table, we don't have the same kind of thing in every column. And so rather than referring to each of the columns by a column number, it is often convenient to refer to the columns by the kind of thing that is in that column. So there is another data structure that we're going to build called a list of dictionaries, and that will help us to solve this problem. If we look at the list of dictionaries, it starts off in a similar way to the list of lists. We have our outer data structure, which is a list with three slots. We're going to call this uh, data structure characters because it's about cartoon characters. And slot number zero, instead of having a list inside this list, it has a dictionary inside the list. So there's one dictionary that's blue, the second dictionary is red, the third dictionary is purple. If I take these dictionaries and spread them out, I have the key for each of the items in that dictionary shown at the top. And then I have the values of each of the items in the dictionary shown as the values of the cells. And so we can imagine this list of dictionaries to be another sort of table. But in this case, the table columns are not identified by their position or their index number, but rather they're identified by the key of the dictionary. And you'll notice each of the dic dictionaries has the same keys in it. They all have name, company, and gender. This is an unordered set of columns. So although I've shown them in the order of name, company, and gender, I could have just as easily put name last and company first and so on. Since we don't refer to them by their position, but rather by their name, it doesn't matter what order we put them in. So if we want to refer to one of the items in this table, then just as we did with the list of lists, we refer to the row that it's in by the number. But now we can refer to the position in that row by the key for the column of that row. So if I want to talk about row one, which is the second row, and the company value, then I use the key company in the square brackets. And I have to put those keys in single quotes because they are strings. So I put the key string in there, and that's going to produce the value that is stored in that cell, or the value that's in the company key of that particular dictionary. So you can think of this as being a data structure where the first item is the row number and the second item is the key. We can say some general things about lists of dictionaries. One thing that differs between the lists of dictionaries and the lists of lists is that it's not really possible to iterate through the columns. If we have the columns being lists, then we could iterate column zero, column one, column two, but we can't really do that because unordered dictionaries uh, can't be iterated. It's a very common usage pattern that each of the items on the list represents an individual of some kind of thing, and then each key value pair represents some kind of property of that individual. If we look at this here, each of the rows represents a cartoon character. Row zero is one character, row one is another character, row two is another character. And then the uh, key value pair represents a property of that individual. So this key value pair here represents a property, the name property of the first character, and this represents the company property and so on. So this row representing a particular item and the key value pairs representing some kind of property of that item is a very uh, common sort of pattern that we see. And because the rows in this sort of table, or we could say the items in the outer list are iterable, it allows us to step through the list of individuals and process each one. Either we can do something with each one, we can print something with each one, or we can check something about each one. And we'll see how we can do that in some of the code examples.